Welcome to Marrow Masters Season 8, sponsored by Omeris Corporation and Insight. The National Bone Marrow Transplant Link, established in 1992, strives to help patients, caregivers, and families cope with the psychosocial challenges of bone marrow and stem cell transplant from diagnosis through survivorship. Season 8 of our show focuses on clinical trials. We're covering how to find them, what to expect, and how survivors have benefited from them. We also talk to healthcare professionals about how these oncology clinical trials are conducted and monitored safely. Our goal is to answer as many of your questions as possible. Here's your host, Executive Director of the National Bone Marrow Transplant Link, Peggy Burkhart. Welcome everyone. Today we have Aisha Stokes of Southfield, Michigan with us. Aisha is a sickle cell disease survivor in remission and free of disease for a few years now, thanks to a clinical trial. Prepare to be inspired by her courage, strength, and determination to get through this and be there for her young family. Hello, Aisha. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about your story, your diagnosis, and how you came to decide to participate in a life-saving clinical trial that involved a transplant for sickle cell disease. My mother found out I, I had sickle cell anemia when I was a newborn. She told me that my legs would swell really bad and I would cry a lot. And um, she never knew why I was always crying and, until one day she ended up taking me to the hospital and they informed her that I had sickle cell disease. So from then on, you know, I've always been in and out of the hospital um, up until the age of maybe 34. I just got tired. Like I, I've been tired of it, but it was to the point where I would start working towards goals and then end up getting sick and having to go into the hospital, coming out, feeling like I had to start my life over. It was just, it, it was, it, I, I got tired of it. You know, I asked my doctor if there was any type of cure because I, I, I did hear about cures, but I just thought it was impossible for me. You know, he, I've asked the same doctor before and he would always tell me no but for some reason I just felt the strength to ask again or, or had the courage to ask again and he told me that uh, Dr. Elvey was running a trial for people like myself who had sickle cell anemia. He told me that I had to sign some documentations that were due before my birthday because around that time my birthday was like the next week. And he said that the trial was only for, I think, like ages 16 to 34 at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was turning 35 the next week and my mother got rest her soul. She uh, passed away 2020. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. And so um, he told me and my mother to come to the, the hospital and sign documentation and we signed papers. My mother and I, we were nervous because of all of the side effects that could happen with the chemo is what me and my mom was most worried about. But I took the courage. I had the courage to go forward with signing the documentation. And he also told me that um, through signing the documentation that I could always change my mind once the time had came to actually make the decision to move forward. Okay. So... He didn't put the pressure on me too much, but he just told me that if I did not sign the documentation, I would not be eligible for the treatment. So we move forward with signing the document. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. One of the doctors, uh, Aisha, that we talked to the other day, it's so interesting that you're saying this because he, he really touched on the patient's rights and he reiterated that at any time, patient can change their mind. And you are certainly driving that message home right now. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going because this is incredible. And I just, I want to say too, I admire your courage. That must have been so scary with very little time to make this decision. You literally had a week yeah. to decide on this and you did it. Absolutely. It was scary, but um, I wanted to just sign the papers and think about it. So I did have enough time to think about it and to, you know, really pray on it and, um, you know, just take my time to um, move forward because the next week when I turned 35, I didn't have to jump right into the experiment. Everything happened like six months after 
Okay. So I didn't have to sign anything right away. Oh, that's good. That was really smart. So let's talk about the chemo. Uh, how was that part of it all for you? Um, so the chemo was horrific. <laughs> I did not like chemo. And honestly, I would consider myself a resilient person, someone who can get through anything. And I didn't know how intense the chemo would be. It was only for four days. Um, so basically what they did was they throughout the process of setting me up for this treatment, they had me go through phoresis. So phoresis is when they take out all of your blood and then they put new blood into you. OK, they were doing that all the way up until it was time for me to start the process of the stem cell transplant treatment. And so throughout getting the phoresis, um, I did not have a sickle cell crisis at all because my doctor stayed up on the phoresis every month. I believe it was either, yeah, it had to be like every month that I would get the phoresis. So my cells would never sickle. So I would just give the advice to all sickle cell patients that if you are wanting to eliminate your sickle cell crisis, to think about getting phoresis every month because, you know, if I did not receive this stem cell treatment, that's what I would do just to alleviate a uh, pain crisis so that you won't be in pain as much as a normal sickle cell client without the phoresis. Yeah, so um, throughout getting the phoresis, it led up to where they had to take all of my, um, my cells out and remodify the cells. Okay. So up until that time, um, this was probably in like 2019, December. Yeah, it had to be around Christmas. They started to prep me for the stem cell process. And throughout that, I had to get chemo for four days. And so um, while getting the chemo, you know, I didn't think that it would take out my hair. Like, <laughs> you know, that was the first thing that they told me to do because I love braids. And this this is actually how my hair was before I had the uh, chemo. I had my hair braided. I didn't think that it would take out my hair. I just thought I was just so different from the normal person who gets chemo, you know. So I want to say, like, if you are getting chemo, be prepared to either cut your hair. Like, if it was me, I would recommend every person who receives chemo to cut their hair first. Okay. So, yeah, um, my hair ended up falling out because I had to receive the chemo within the four days. And then I, w I ended up getting strap throat. It was it was not a pretty process. I lost a lot of weight. My um taste buds were really horrible. It was I was unable to eat. It was just a lot dealing with the chemo. And I'm not trying to scare anybody, but these are the things that you have to look for before, you know, going through this process. This is the things that you may want to think about before getting them. So I my hair ended up coming out, taste buds were gone, losing weight, and um also it was just a lot that happened to my skin that I was not used to. It was hard. It was hard. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, obviously. So then after that, you had the transplant. Uh, would that have been the beginning of 2020? So I got the chemo for four days. And then after the four days of chemo, they wanted to see how my body had uh, taken the chemo. They wanted to see if it, any thing or any like side effects would happen throughout the chemo or if I would have like the normal symptoms from chemo after that like I think they watched me for a few days and then after the chemo process maybe like a few days after is when they started to put the old cells my cells that they remodified back into my body okay gotcha yeah wow tell us what happened after that after they put the cells back into my body, I didn't really feel too much from that. You know, I just never, re I never had pain after that. But, you know, I had to recover. The most damage that I had from the stem cell transplant was the chemo. Sure. So I wish that we could take that part out. We could skip <laughs> the, the chemo part and just go ahead and jump to the putting the stem cells in my body into our bodies. But no, you have to go through the chemo part now. But um, I had to just heal from the chemo. Yeah, sure. You know, it's interesting. Patients will tell us, 
I guess by the time you get to the stem cell transplant, it's often very uneventful. <laughs> yes. It's not this big uh, moment like people think it is. But you did all the heavy lifting in advance. And that was the part, you know, I guess that's the easy part. So, Aisha, let's talk about how you feel about a clinical trial after your experience. What's your advice to people that are considering it or scared? Tell us how you feel about it. Okay, yes. My advice would be if you are considering to do the stem cell transplant, make sure that you do not have any type of side activities. Like if you're in school and I want to motivate everyone, but the healing process will take up so much of your time. So I'm not saying that you can't go to school while doing this, but, you know, at the time I was trying to get a job, trying to do all of these things, because I like to be on the go all the time. But you have to make sure that you make room for yourself to heal because during this process, you're not going to be wanting to do anything because that chemo, it just just sucks all the life out of you. So make sure that all of your side jobs are, are either finished, you know, maybe, you know, completed, because during this process, you're not going to be wanting to do anything. It just it's going to make you feel really weak with the chemo. Sure. Um, And I just want to be real. I just want to be honest with you because I'm a very active person and I felt like I wanted to do things, but I couldn't because the chemo took up so much of my energy. Yeah. Another thing that I want to recommend is that if you are looking forward to having children in the future and you never had any, make sure you freeze your eggs because um, some people are not able to have children after the chemo, or it's going to be very, very difficult to get back your administration. So make sure that you freeze your eggs. Make sure you research that and um, talk to your doctor, your OBGYN, on how you can uh, preserve your eggs. You know, because there are people who have been able to get their administration back, but people like myself, I haven't gotten mine back, and it's been two years, you know, And I don't want any more children, but I just feel like, you know, as a woman, I don't I don't know. It's just something about having the ministration that I miss, you know. Sure. But, um, yeah, I would just recommend that all women and including men, because I don't know the effects that it can do for men and and their sperm count. But for sure, I do know that it does cause issues for women who are trying to have children in the future. Okay. And you do have children, correct? Yes, I do. I have three children, actually, twin boys and a daughter. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good for you. And let's talk about life today. So a few years out, oh, you did this clinical trial. You got the stem cell transplant. How are you doing today? I would say I'm doing excellent. You know, I've not had a sickle cell crisis in about two to three years now. And it's just been amazing because I'm able to dedicate myself to projects that I wasn't able to do before. Like sometimes, you know, I would plan things ahead and then end up getting a pain crisis and having to go into the hospital and become unmotivated, had to re-motivate myself again to complete the project. So now (laughs) I'm doing so much better. I'm working full time in my field. I'm in the master's program. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm in school. I'm working. I'm doing very good. I'm um, running a business. I have so much, um, like a lot of things that I've always wanted to do that I'm currently doing now. So it's just a blessing. Oh, I'll say you are truly an inspiration. Thank you. I picked up on uh, some spirituality. Tell us how that helped you get through this experience. (laughs) Well, (laughs) Absolutely. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. I don't know how you picked that up, but yes. <laughs> My spiritual, okay, so um, it's all about faith, you know. I do know that um, I did, I feel like I did manifest this at one point. I believe in writing down your vision and making it plain. So years ago, maybe back in 2017, I wrote down on a a dream board that I was healed from sickle cell anemia. On there, it says I'm healed, I'm healthy, and I no longer have sickle cell anemia. I didn't know why I wrote that, but I just knew that I was going to be healed one day. 
Oh, this is great. This, this had to, <laughs> yeah, this had to be back in like 2016 or 17. What I do know is that in 2017, I graduated college with my bachelor's degree. I had my daughter in March. I walked the stage in April. Before I walked the stage, I had a hip replacement, a full hip replacement because sickle cell just kept attacking my ligaments, you know, and so I just got tired, you know. Sure. So I wrote down on my dream board that I was completely healed from sickle cell anemia. And I really believe that when you write something down and you believe in it and you have faith in it, it will happen. And so I lit a candle, a white candle, and I prayed to God and I just I wrote the letter and I put it under the candle and I just prayed and asked God for healing. And lo and behold, I'm healed today. So I do believe that my spirituality has definitely played a big role, a huge role in my healing today. And of course, God, we can't forgive God. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yes, definitely would not be healed without God and without the faith that I had to write the vision and make it plain. Oh, this is just outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. I feel inspired. I'm going to go write some things down as soon as we're done today. <laughs> oh, yes, I believe you should. I really do. <laughs> oh, this is great. I, I don't even know what else. I don't know how we can top that. That was just just the best. I am so happy for you. I'm so happy to hear that you are healed. Thank you. And I just know that other people are going to be inspired by you. Uh, I, when I, you were talking about the chemo, it made me think of of several of our survivors who describe it as, you know what, you just have to take care of business and hit the pause button for a little bit. And boy, talk about you hit the pause button so that you could have the rest of your life to hit the play button, right? Absolutely. And if you look at it that way, mm -hmm. it just totally makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would like to add that. Sure. <laughs> you may be a little down because you done lost your hair or you know, for dark skinned women, I don't know what it is with dark skinned women, but it affects your skin complexion a whole lot with the chemo. And so I used to always get compliments on my on my skin and how smooth it was. And, you know, the chemo, it did mess up my skin a lot. But, uh, you know, my doctor was telling me everything is going to come back. Everything is going to come back. You'll be fine. And so I just want to encourage all of the the people who do get chemo. Even the ones who don't have sickle cell, who have gotten uh, chemotherapy, that um, if you are having issues with your skin because of the chemo, just know that that chemo is not going to be there for long. Like it will, everything will go back to normal. You know, I'm not going to promise it, but I will say it did for me. OK, so if you're worried about chemo messing up your skin complexion or it messing up your hair, just know that you will you will get your hair back. It's not <laughs> going to be long. So just be patient and allow the healing to begin so that you can be fully healed. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Aisha, this is great. So I think it's time to wrap things up. Is there any final words you want to say? Absolutely. So I want to first uh, give thanks to my mother. Um, my mom, she played a huge role in my healing, you know, she was there by my side the whole time. And, you know, I just want to dedicate this podcast to her because Aww. she's not here right now to hear. It. And it's just unbelievable. But mom, I just want to say that I love you so much. And I know you're with me. I know you are by my side listening and smiling down on me. So I just I just want to say thank you for um, being with me through my healing. I love you so much. Oh. I also want to thank Dr. Elevy and his team and the National Bone Marrow Transplant Link for the opportunity to educate people like myself on your clinical trial. Thank you so much for helping me to be at my best self today. Well, thank you again. Thank you. This has been the Marrow Masters Podcast. If you know someone who would benefit from the information in our show, please share this episode with them via text, email, or social media. Don't miss an episode of our show. Follow the Marrow Masters Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you're listening right now. 
To connect with the National Bone Marrow Transplant Link, visit nbmtlink.org or follow the link in our show notes. The Marrow Masters Podcast is produced by Jag in Detroit Podcasts.